Hello everyone, this is the Boomer Nerd, also known as George Tasker. Now I'm trying to think about where I left off yesterday. And as I seem to recall, I was at the stage of doing or explaining XML. And the short version of that is that XML is known as extensible markup language, which is just a code which we agreed yesterday was used in all sorts of endeavors. And I use music as one, but you could also use it in databases and all sorts of other types of endeavors. Anything that involves getting computer data down onto a computer for various uses and one of the most common of course is HTML which is used to display or control how data is displayed in a screen okay so where was I so yesterday I was talking about XML talked about HTML and then I started asking myself well how has software programming changed over the last 20 odd years hmm well initially I asked a question prior not that one okay so let's uh, put myself back up on the top corner where I belong and show you where I'm at but that's not the question that was asked there's the question okay how programming languages have changed the question I had prior to that was how has computer programming changed over the last 20 years and the responses that came up were much more generic and I looked at PHP to see what that meant and instead I've changed it to now how programming languages have changed but I did find some interesting um, information on the former question and I've got to now go back and try and find out what happened to it Because a lot of the answers were very ah here we go now we're getting close okay this one here is given the change in popularity of languages over the last four or five years but I did stumble across another answer that gave different kind of question uh, answer and now I'm having, struggling to find it oh, that's annoying no all right no don't like that how has coding changed All right. Somebody said when they first started code programming in the early 1970s, you wrote a program on paper, typed it into file or card punch, and submitted the program to an operator to be run. After being scheduled and run, usually an hour or so later, you could view the results, compile errors, or program output, make necessary changes, and resubmit the program for another test. So maybe you could get a good test and revision every 1.5 hours or so if you are lucky. In this environment, it was essential for the program to be very careful and have good code reading and analysis skills to minimise the number of bugs found in each iteration. It was also necessary to incorporate a lot of debug outputs to give you enough information to debug the code if it didn't work. Today, modern IDEs, which stands for Integrated Development Environment, allow you to edit, recompile, and usually run in a matter of seconds. In this in modern environment, it's a waste of time to scale your code carefully for compile errors. The compiler can find them in half a second. And don't bother to write the entire program before debugging. Write a small piece, test it, debug it, add another feature, test again. Actually, that is the Agile method to some degree. Whereas the waterfall method expected you to essentially write the whole program before you tried to run it or even compile it 
but the trouble is that you ran into so many compilation errors. A large program may now be written quickly, one small task at a time. So you could write up a small addition function, you could test it, you could put a test harness, uh, run a test harness over it, and you could leave that test harness sitting there ready to run again next time you do the test, just to make sure nothing's been changed. The fast reduced compile test cycle time allows the program to focus on solving the problem. It's the basis of agile methodology, build the program. Okay, yeah, right, so he does mention that as well. Um, but it doesn't really answer the kind of question that I'm looking for. And the kind of question I'm looking for is I came into the programming industry about the same time that they were changing from procedural type of programming to object-oriented programming or class programming. And that was a really major change in the way programs got to operate very major because you ended up completely thinking in a totally different way as to how you were going to do your programming I mean I actually got to speak to people who used to write in COBOL and they used to talk about how they would think in procedural terms and then when I saw some come from COBOL over into the object oriented world you saw them write up some very strange data scenarios and ones that I'd never seen before but they worked in Pascal but they're ones that I'd never ever seen and it came from people who wrote in COBOL now, um, they may have done it for privacy reasons. They didn't want the data to be seen outside the class or something like that, but whatever reason, it was very strange. But it worked. It obviously worked for the guy concerned. Uh, so this guy, Dextra, I've seen seen some of his writings before in the next 40 years mathematics will emerge as the art and science of effective formal reasoning we shall derive our intellectual excitement from learning how to let symbols do the work mm. yeah maybe but he's thinking at an extremely abstract level which is probably even beyond the abstraction of which I am normally comfortable with <sighs> uh, dynamic languages the static ones Okay, so what's the difference between dynamic languages and static? Hmm. Okay, let's go and ask a question. I'm curious now. So I'm going to break out a new... Um, okay. So I'm going to ask... Uh, what's the difference between... Ah, uh, come back here. between dynamic and static languages. Okay. All right, let's go and find out. Uh, I could just go and look at a YouTube article, but the trouble is with YouTube, it takes time. Oh, you generally read a lot quicker than I can, than I can listen. Static typing means to type to known and check for correctness before running your program. This is often done by a language a compiler. For example, the following Java method would cause a compiler method before you run your program. Yeah, okay, I can. Oh, yeah, okay. So they want them to be cleared. I think they want them to be cleared outside the function. Oh, no, no. No, I can see that it's been declared and then filled with a value instantaneously. Boolean B equals X. Okay, right. So that's the declaration section. So the way that you would do it, 
there is you would say int x boolean b and then you would go down oh but also they're different types you would have to typecast the x into a boolean for it to work okay yeah i can i can see what the problem is there yeah dynamic type means that the type's only known as your program is running for example one in python 3 if it matters script can be run without problems def s equals cat 1 print high but we call but if we call erroneous a type error will be raised at one time when erroneous is called so in other words we'll compile but then it will spit the dummy when you try to run it hmm I don't know I think I'd be inclined to prefer the one that spits the dummy at compile time before the running if that type of each verified static programming language dynamic during runtime if there's an invalid time and a variable violates the data type and the error is given for that summary static language well, I guess what that means is that um, the the unit testing harnesses are going to be that much more important in the case of dynamic type rather than uh, more even more so than they would be for static typing uh, I don't know I guess I tend to be a pragmatic programmer and just go with whatever works if uh, I'm told I have to program in a certain language and that certain language has certain kinds of ways of doing things programming with dynamic variables is way easier faster and cleaner yet all the type guessing takes CPU power and tends to be orders of magnitude slower hence the choice between the two depends on how CPU intensive your appliance is yeah I think I could agree with that static is language is a language that works like a dynamic language but with less effort and this effort is writing code in a static we have to write less code compared to a dynamic yeah but with a dynamic you spend less time declaring data so it's kind of like a swings and roundabouts thing you, did, you you pick up your data and, and and run it as you as you go down the the page in in uh, dynamic <sighs> okay so they've talked there about the issues as far as static and and dynamic is concerned they don't really tell you anything about about okay all right. So all language design translate human readable code into machine instructions. A dynamic language is designed to optimize programmer efficiency so you can implement functionality with less code. A static is designed to optimize hardware efficiency so the code you write executes as quickly as possible. But they don't tell you really a lot about memory management of the two of them either. Okay, if any program language allows memory allocation done at runtime, then that programming language is dynamic. Examples Java, no bullshit. That can't be right. No, no. I don't think he's got it right. Memory compilation time. Oh. yeah yeah he, he, he's kind of got it but it doesn't really doesn't really go the way that I want it to go I think I prefer the other ones but I wonder which one is the better 
at memory handling, whether it be a static or a dynamic. It's hard to know. I suppose it depends on whether the uh, uh, memory manager for each program, whether it's a de half decent one. So I guess the answer to that is indeterminate. For example, Java has its own memory allocator manager. And it can mark memory for deletion once the reference counter gets to zero on a particular block of memory. Hmm. All right. Let's just go back. Um, no, I don't want to go there yet. So someone has gone from dynamic to a static. Okay. So I, I kind of go along with what this guy says here. He didn't say they can't scale, but they're harder to scale. Programs humans have a finite amount of, therefore when scale goes up, so they need discipline to incur nominal cost and the prototyping stage of field that is a drop in the ocean compared to the amount of scale you can get begin discipline spent. Okay. The old world is terrified of the possibilities of new technology. Oh, why should you? You, know, you give everything a, a crack at it and let it go. Damn. 20 minutes in and I really haven't got too far, have I? Yeah. Um, let's just run back up to this uh, graph up here. Oh, no, 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 that's not him. I saw a graph yesterday and I can't remember where I saw it. Okay, is it down here? No, we'll come back to that in a moment. No. Not him. Okay, not him. Maybe I'll go back to this one here. Uh, no. Okay, we'll go back down to here. One of the things someone else pointed out in the last 10 years or so is the way in which the popularity of various um, languages has changed. And so we've had Perl, we've had PHP, C Sharp, C++, JavaScript, Java, Python. So those are the most common languages. And one of the things that I think we um, can do is look up Tobe, T-O-B-E, language popularity. Now that doesn't specific, oh there it is, Tiobi Inst Index, there it is. The Software Quality Company, okay. All right. Can we, ah there we go, there's a graph. Well this is even better. But it does show some of the same kinds of things. So let's go back up and take a look. What's this one? Ah, there it is. So there's Java. Java. Come on, show your face. Okay. So Java's down to 10.4 per 6. It was at 26.49. Uh, C had a huge drop in popularity then it bounced back up again for some strange reason uh, so what happened here Java had a similar drop uh, C++ had a didn't have a drop it's had a decline and then it started to climb again PHP did climb 
and then it's just been on a slow decline since that time what is its current popularity now here it is 2.19 percent so it's sort of like one in 50 people are using java okay what do we got here sql why would it be flatlining like that did they not have any data for it 2.44 okay C sharp Oh, that's helpful. Java, C++, C Sharp, Visual Basic. Well, it looks like they only measured it since 2010, which is rather interesting because I was fooling around with Visual Basic way back in 2002. So I wonder, maybe it it's, uh, didn't get up high enough to register on the Tiobi scale. We got JavaScript, SQL, which is rather strange. It's got that dead straight line there, which would suggest to me no data along that period of that straight line. You don't get straight lines like that all the time. Okay, PHP. Let me take a look at assembly language. Ooh, starting to pick up again. Assembly language. Oh dear. I mean, you really only want to do that if you're into essentially bare metal programming. I mean, it's one step above bits and bytes. Ones and zeros. I've done a bit of programming in ones and zeros. But that was many years ago. And all I did, it was a, com a university exercise to see if we could get the darn computer to print out a letter A on the screen of the monitor and we did succeed in doing it but damn the amount of effort that was involved in doing that I think we had to pump out about 10 instructions just to get the letter A to appear can you imagine you were trying to get a whole message out but it was fun to do I mean we actually made it work but it's not something I'd want to do for a living you know, maybe, maybe a hobby or just a fun exercise, an intellectual challenge. But nah. But it's very interesting to notice here that Python has been climbing. Python has been climbing in popularity. Okay. Now, the question is, do I want to be able to have an interpretive language or a compiled language? I guess the answer to that is going to depend on whether you want your code to be open source or whether you want it to be closed source. Compiled languages allow you to close source. You can spit out a program and send it on its way to a customer. It will run fine on their computer, but they won't have access to the code. Okay. So essentially what I'm saying is there hasn't been any real change. Hmm. Uh, no, I think I'll leave that there for now. I'm looking at doing some things to work with OBS. There's certain functionalities I want OBS to be able to achieve, which it's currently not doing at the moment. And this is one of the tools that might help in that area. So essentially what's been happening, as you can see here, we're seeing an increase in popularity from 2017 to 2020. Java has stayed at the same kind of level. JavaScript went down and then bounced back up. 
C++ has increased in popularity, generally speaking, so is C Sharp. Not too many of these have really gone down. I suppose this is what why we should take a look and see what why that might be. But one of the things I can say is that Python is a class oriented uh, language. So let's go and take a quick look at Python. Python oh let's I just do this. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to put this in. Learn to code. And then I'm going to put Python at the end because I want to talk about Python. So, uh, Python for beginners. Because I don't know anything about it. Um, okay. And we will take a look at a couple of things here. So learn to Python. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we go back to Python about getting started. Um, tell you what, I'm curious to know what they try to teach non-programmers because, all right. Got some books there. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's go go off to programmers. Programmers, programmers. Beginner's guide for programmers. Have experience with other like programming languages, C Perl, Lisp. Visual Basic, well I had Pascal. Interest uh, such a late beginner's guide says blah blah blah. Yeah, okay, let's go and have a look at beginner's duck introduction to Python. Python idle text editor which execute Python code. Well, I'm going to check that out in Linux because I want to be able to run a um, uh, programming platform on Linux, which is where I happen to be at the moment. Python code is unexpected. Do, do, do. So, Python is more commonly used as a module rather than intertwine like some PHP or Cold Fusion. Two. Python is space sensitive, it means you must have four spaces for each indentation every single time. Getting this more later, let's go to an example. Yeah, okay, well that's simple enough. Uh, can we go on to the next one? Hmm. Okay. So this is introduction. We've got two lines of code here. And that's it. Nothing else. All right. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to follow the comments. Uh, is there anything else we can do here? So it's this Python. Hmm. Dive into Python 3. I want to know what is the Python language good for? Hmm. 
Hmm. Okay. Someone says awesome python. Ooh. The awesome awesome. Okay, let's go take a look. Every time I hear that noise, it sounds like my phone's going off. Noise in the background. Field vision. It looks like it does pretty much everything. Said it looks that way. Okay, so it looks like Python is more common on Linux. But I think one of its things claims to fame is being an interpretive language means that all you've got to do is have a Python interpreter on Microsoft Windows or possibly uh, the Mac. Looks like a huge number of people have put stuff into it. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to ask one more question. Here it is. We'll go ahead and take a quick look at Wiki. Sticky Wiki. Okay. Use general purpose high level programming language. Sign philosophy and such code readability. Yeah, I'm into that. And it syntax allows programs set express concepts pure lines of code then would be possible language C or Java. Provides constructs enable clear programs on both a small and large scale. Supports multiple programming paradigms including object oriented, imperative and functional or procedural scholar. Aye. Right, we're starting to find some answers here. So you've got object oriented, imperative, functional programming or procedural styles. A dynamic type system and automatic memory management has a large and comprehensive standard library. Python is available for installation on many operating systems known as Pi Thin Code Exe. So probably two whistles Pi to EXE or Pi to store the Python code can be packaged in standalone executable programs. Some of the most popular Okay. Alright, so you can put it into proper uh, code. Hmm. Right. Okay, I'm going to do a bit more research about all the various uh, programming paradigms. You've got object oriented programming, imperative programming uses statements that change the program state in much the same way. Imperative mood, language expresses commands. 
discusses commands for computer perform imperative programming so on how a program operates term is often used in contrast to declarative programming which speaks on what the program should accomplish without specifying how the program should achieve the result okay I'm going to do a bit more research here right now I need to just stop for a break and then I will come back into it okay so I've just come back from a bit of a break and uh, taken a look at the various types of programming styles <coughs> now the first programming style that I came across was procedural programming let's take a look and see what that is programming paradigm derived from structured programming based on the concept of procedure call procedures known as routines, subroutines or functions not to be confused with mathematical functions but similar to those using functional programming <laughs> contain a series of com computational steps to be carried out and your procedure you might be called at any point during a program's execution including by other procedures or itself procedural programming language includes C, Go, Fortran, Pascal and basic yeah that, that'd be right um, yeah that's right <coughs> I remember having quite a lot of trouble wrapping my head around um, Pascal after my first programming language that I was exposed to was BASIC and of course BASIC always had um, line numbers and uh, we used to always have the line numbers go up in steps of 10 for the simple reason that we might later on decide we want to put some line numbers back in between some other um, calls and uh, so then we might go instead of going from 10 to 20 we might go to 15 but what would happen sometimes is that you would run you would have too many lines inserted and you couldn't stick another one in between and the way we got around that problem was the interpretive interpreter allowed us to do a renumber of all the line numbers so as it went back to 10 between but the renumber also meant that you had to change some of the lines of code as well so a go to 100 might then become go to 150 various things like that <coughs> okay So yeah, th those definitely were procedural uh, languages. Now, uh, procedural program languages are also imperative languages because they make explicit references to state of execution environment. Anything from variables, which may correspond to processor registers, something like the position of a tur turtle in the logo programming language. All right. Um, I'm going to say a lot about uh, the object oriented because uh, I personally know a lot more about the difference of it. Um, with procedural, you didn't worry so much about where the data was placed, uh, and data could be declared on the run, especially if you're in basic. In Pascal, you couldn't. You had to declare it before you used it. But even then, um, there was no real organisation imposed upon you beyond what you would impose upon the procedures. And you could just pretty much rip data from anywhere and stick it anywhere else. Uh, there was, of course, the concept of local and global data within languages such as Pascal. And once you got to object oriented, 
then the data could be contained within an object and we can get more into that later on. Comparison with functional programming. Um, yeah, look, I, I, I'm not going to say a lot here. Um, function application. Hmm. Yeah. Logic programming. Never heard of logic programming. Program is a set of premises and computations performed by attempting to prove candidate theorems. From this point of view, logic programs are declarative. Actually, what the problem is rather than on how to solve it. However, the backward reasoning technique implemented by SLD resolution used to solve problems logic such as Prolog treats programs as goal reduction procedures. Thus clauses of the form H blah 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 have a dual interpretation as both procedures. Now I think I'll I'll go and take a look at that later because it's not really telling me enough. Programming paradigms. Actually, I think I've just stumbled onto something that's quite useful. Uh, all right. So Python uh, is supports multiple programming paradigms: object, imperative, functional, or procedural. It features dynamic type system, automatic automatic memory management and has a large and comprehensive standard library. <coughs> so it's an interpreter language. And it seems to be a general purpose. I have seen it used to create certain types of, of uh, programs. For example, at the moment there's a particular one that's not being used all that much. Oh, there it is, Gourmet Recipe Manager. That's the one I was looking for. Um, no, that's not it. All right, let's try that again. No, it's got the right. It's got the right thing. got the right icon. Let's take a look at that. So what's going on here? Hmm. Okay, let's keep going. Ah, web edition. Right. Okay, that's our problem. Okay, this is the one I was looking at. This one has been written up in Python. Yeah. <coughs> the only trouble is, um, that doesn't run the latest version of Python to interpreter, and so they've been trying to update it. Um, go to downloads. See, that was seven or eight years ago, and. Need to just see. So that was open on the seventeenth Python three GTK three. So Let's see, see what that uh, tells us.
This is saving your recipes, rating to text in recipe browser. So it's t talking about all the various features here, and it's been done in Control <coughs> C and context menu. Okay. Programming paradigms. Back to that. All right. So we said that Python is the one that's increasing in popularity. Um, so, one of the other questions I should consider, and this is another iron in the fire, dynamic and static, okay, so I've already asked that question, don't need that. Uh, Call it developing. I prefer writing. I say I write computer programs. Okay. First platform to develop Android apps. So they can cross platform tools for app development. Okay. Mm. All right. So it says Java's most preferred choice for developing complex scalable application doesn't matter on which platform you develop Android apps all right we're going to take a quick look at that oh this is software let's ch change the question because I'm not getting the answer I want and while the other answers are somewhat Interesting. <clears throat> that one seems to give the most relevant. I'll just take a quick look at this one about software. Android is attracting a large number of application developers and business owners with its features. And I guess in part because it provides a lot more freedom than the other. Power device to tablets have become the greatest need of all tech savvy people. App, okay, yeah, all right, I'll go along with that. Yeah, open source idea. So, talking about the app machine, complete trial icon response, blah blah blah. Yep, the app builder. I wonder how many of these are good for Linux. There's one way to find out, I suppose. Come on. Oh, that's just an image. That's about as useful as tits on the ball. Okay. Okay. Maybe I'll just do a search for it. App machine. So I'll just do that. Search the index for your app machine. Build your own app, fast, no code app. That's bullshit. There's no such thing as a no code app. Anyway, it's got the right icon. I'll go and take a look at it. It's got some things about it. So this is this is all based upon build and design. 35 pre coded snap together building blocks and now blah blah blah. Oh, come on. Yeah. Don't need to hire genies, you can do it yourself. Enables anyone to make apps. Damn, I should take a look at that. Uh, pricing. Plus app, pro app, reseller bundle. Okay, so in other words, you're paying bucks. Okay. 
Apple developer and a Google Play license is $25 one time fee. That Apple states all apps must be submitted to by provider of the app's content. More than one app, this could mean you have to buy multiple. Oh, okay, right. Okay, no, 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 not good for my purposes. I'm into open source, and uh, while at one time I might have been into okay so we'll jump out of that one go back and see what else they're telling us we can get the app builder okay let's look at that one the app builder we're going to hunt for that so we don't need app machine as a search term we'll go to the app builder uh. okay Looks like it's got a Russian. Okay. So it looks like it's a Russian. We'll go and take a quick look on Facebook. Phone, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so there's our link. That's the one I was looking for. Your connection is not private. Ah. So, in other words, they're not happy about it but it's uh, we'll just accept cookies the only thing is it's taken us to something that's got nothing to do with apps no doesn't take give me anything that I want no not interested okay what else can we do Escape, yep. Android Studio. Device emulator don't need to own many physical devices. That's good. GitHub, Bitbucket, or GitLab version control and code hosting. Firebase. I thought Firebase was a database. I think I should take take a look at that. It used to be owned by Borland. Okay, so what is it actually? I want to. Okay. All right. Firebase extensions. doesn't tell me enough I think I'm going to have to run off and do a bit of video watching alright uh, well, we've hit the hour mark at least sorry it hasn't been very productive this particular time but I think we're going to get a bit more productive later this is so freaking annoying Here's an idea. To uh, see if I can find someone talking about the darn thing. Search the index for Firebase. So, what is Firebase? So.
K in 2011. Uh, Wikipedia is always quite useful. Shows the prior back end as a service company that makes a number of products for software developers building mobile web applications. Firebase was founded. Blah blah blah. Real time database which provides an API allows developers to store and sync data across multiple clients. Followed by Google 2014. Pre app measurements, less surprising on app uses and using cage messaging. Ah, yeah. What if I don't want to use the Firebase Cloud to store my synchronized data? Is there any other way of accessing it? Setting up a Firebase Cloud elsewhere. Don't like the term cloud. Well, I suppose it's supposed to be deliberately nebulous. Okay. Yeah, look, uh, I think it's you, you're giving too much control to somebody else. If you're somebody who wants to be able to control all, all of your own stuff and move it around as you wish, I don't see Firebase as being the kind of thing that would help you to do that. Okay. But um, we could look for alternatives <clears throat> okay there's one hmm here we go that'll do we'll just go to a couple there's obviously quite a few that give you Okay. Don't need to work with server side programming. Okay, for me. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So Firebase is good by look of things if you don't want to be concerned with server side mumbo jumbo so a lot of people would probably find that it is attractive for that very reason the only thing reason the problem is you you put in control of your data into the hands of someone else and that may not be desirable is there a way See, this one is essentially the same thing. Sweet of clouds. Okay. All right. <coughs> yeah, no. Nah. Aha. <coughs> this is what I like. Hoodie. No back end technology. Offline support. Dedicated community runs both on hosted and locally. Now, there you go, which means you get to control your own data. Firehouse, okay. 
one, yeah, app code deployed. Hmm. So this is one of the questions you've got to consider. Are you, how much control of your data are you willing to give to other companies? What happens if you've got the wrong political views and they deem you a risk because of the kind of data you're putting up? Already, there are some apps on some of the stores that are either going to be tossed off, have already been tossed off, or have to be severely modified on account of the kinds of people that use the app's concern. What kind of freedom do you want? And I think I'm get this is going to take quite a lot more research at the moment. This is not the prime objective of where I'm headed. So I can see that I'm going to be heading off down quite a long rabbit trail and it's going to take quite a lot more research. And in fact, it might get to the stage I start pumping out multiple videos per day because this is going to take quite a lot of work. I've been out of the industry for 18 years and in that time a huge number of products have come online, a huge number of devices have come online and while I have been mostly using them, mostly as a power user, I drive my devices hard but at the same time it also has brought a huge number of products online and it brings to you an awareness that there's a whole lot of issues that are going to be have to be considered before you start heading down any path of development or anything else for that matter. So I think we'll probably leave it there. I'm George Tasker, the Boomer Nerd.